Here's a story of Edmund Dory, who's at Discovery Building with the girls. All of them come to work with each other, cause clients meant the world. Here's a story of a man named JR, who was busy with making daily shows. Joe is here as well, he comes whenever, he helps us I suppose. Till the one day when America went on lockdown And they knew that it was much more than a hunch That this group must somehow meet on Tuesdays And that's the way we all became Discovery Bunch Discovery Bunch Discovery Bunch That's the way we became Discovery Bunch How'd you guys like that intro? You think that's funny? Wait until the end of the show and I'll show you something funnier than that. All right, so let's begin today's show. Um, our background right now is, at this moment of recording, is a live uh, feed of the Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii Humpback Whale Sanctuary at Maui Islands. Uh, courtesy of YouTube channel Afar TV and I think it says it is 726 a.m. Uh, in that location right now so I, I, I guess the whales are sleeping and you won't see them right now anyways today's show for Wednesday August 19 2020 welcome back and let's start our exercise then we'll come back here for today's observances all right, for today's exercise, we're going to play Wii Bowling. Now, let me show you what you need to do. Pretend you have a ball on your hand. At the corner of the video is going to be one of us playing the Wii Bowling. You just have to follow what we do. For bowling, you have to swing your arm like this. If you're ambulatory, make sure that you're bending your knees and slightly crouching as well. You can do this exercise with your other leg as well. Feel free to switch anytime you want. You can also switch hands if the other ever gets tired or you can't use one of your hands. If you're on a wheelchair, or if you ever get tired of standing up, you can always grab a chair and do the following. It's pretty much the same one as when you were standing. If your hand gets tired, you could always use the other. And that is it. Let's begin.
Alright, well, Joe seems to be pretty proud of his score. Now it's my turn. Remember to follow along, you're playing with us. Alright, I'm pretty sure I beat him. But there's one more player. Here comes JR.
Okay, it looks like I won this round between us three. Remember that you guys need to do the motions with us. The more of you who exercise with us, the better that we're going to do on the next episodes. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed it. Let's get on with our morning show. Alright guys, welcome back. Oh man, my hair is getting long. I should make a video of me trimming it. Anyways, welcome back. Let's start with today's observances. Observances number one. Black cow root beer float day. We always talk about this. Every time. It always comes up for some reason for observances. So, uh, black cow is a root beer float. There's actually a brown cow one, I remember. But today, it's uh, this one. The term came from the 1930s you know they like to nickname things and it is root beer so root beer right there mix with a couple shots of chocolate syrups syrups just syrup you can't count syrup and topped with vanilla ice cream right there those three combined makes the black cow root beer so basically, it's a root beer flavored ice cream with smir swirls of milk chocolate. It's a black cow. That's, that's what it is. Next is International Bow Day. An observance to appreciate the style and fashion of bows. It's not only for the ladies though, because there's this thing. It's a bow tie. You can wear a bow tie today if you are going to observe. Uh, is it international? Yes, it's International Bow Day. Um, bow ties, uh, the difference between that and a necktie, the bow ties kind of make you look uh, younger and more friendly. 
Uh, neckties tend to make you look very like serious and business oriented. That's why it's the most common um, thing to wear. But if you would like to look more friendly, uh, bow ties are the choice. Uh, remember, today's observance is not this. Don't wear this. You'll hurt yourself. Next observance is National Aviation Day. All things aviation, that means all things flying. Uh, interests about flying things uh, how do you observe this well you can uh, do some studying do some research about uh, let's see what topics can we talk about well number one airplanes uh, obviously something that flies but there is also uh, high-tech stuff like this uh, it's an airplane but Go ahead and try to find out what's, uh, what's so special about this one, those of you guys who are interested in uh, high-tech stuff. Of course, helicopters are also a good topic to research because um, the way they fly works uh, a lot differently than how an airplane flies. Uh, airplanes can't stay in the air without moving forward, kind of like um, riding a bike. Uh, if you stop moving, you're going to have trouble like balancing yourself. Um, you could also look into the history of uh, aviation like these guys, uh, the Wright brothers, trying to, um, back then when they didn't think man could fly, they said no, we're going to try to find a way. And also, in line with this observance, there is this person and, you know what, instead of me telling you guys, how about you tell me because she came up in observances before, not observances, in daily shows before. Uh, so, write down in the comments what, who do you think this person is and what does she have anything to do with aviation. Next is International Orangutan Day. Easy. It's easy to find out which one's an orangutan because you know how its name is like, has the, it's, it kind of has the word orange in it. They usually have like orange fur, you know. Anyways, these guys are native to Indonesia and Malaysia, and they are great apes, which means they are uh, a category of apes that have the largest brains. Uh, they're the ones that are um, very resourceful and smart. Uh, they're like chimpanzees, uh, gorillas. Uh, but the, the, the defining factor besides their orange fur about orangutans is they're, they're ones that um, live atop trees and are very mobile. They, they like being atop trees more than any of the other great apes. Whoa, did you see that? Something happened with the camera in the background. Oh well. Next is National Hot and Spicy Food Day. If you're a fan of spicy food, comment below what your favorite spicy... Spicy? Spicy dishes. Even if you don't eat a lot of spicy food, uh, if you've ever eaten one, you could, uh, I guess, comment which ones you actually like. And it doesn't have to be really, really spicy. Um, even if it's just mildly spicy, like um, Taco Bell hot sauce, mildly spicy. Um, you could write down in the comments below which one's that. Uh, well, I will need your help for this because for me, I can't really decide between two things. Number one is the Japanese curry that you see here on the picture. Let me show you a better picture of it right there. Ding! I can't decide between this one or the Mexican taco pictured here. Let me zoom in on it. There you go. Delicious. Not the Taco Bell ones or the Taco ones. Those aren't Mexican tacos. They're still delicious though, but that's not the one. Anyways, next one is National Potato Day. Uh, do I really have to explain to you guys what potatoes are? You see it on picture right there. There is yellow, there is brown potatoes, and there is red potatoes. And if you paid attention to cooking class, you would know what the difference between those are. Maybe I'll talk about it in a different, in a dish of the day thing, if we landed on a dish that's full of potatoes. Ooh, what's going on in the background? Let's check it out for a second before we continue talking about the potatoes. Oh, it looks like they kind of moved the camera to the side. Maybe they saw some whales and maybe they're trying to show us. 
But no, looks like the whales are still sleeping. Anyways, back to the show. National Potato Day. Um, how about you comment below what your favorite dish that has potato in it? Except French fries or mashed potatoes. Those are... You, come on, you don't even have to think of... To think? I'm Sandy now. You don't even have to think about it. Uh, I want a dish that has potato that it is... That's not um, a side dish or something like that. Uh, my favorite one is this one. Beef stew. That's potato in it. It's right here. Alright, let's move on to Today in History. What is our first entry? Looks like 1960. Sputnik 5 is launched by the USSR. That's weird it's called Sputnik 5 because everywhere else they actually call it Korabul Sputnik 2. Different number, way different number. I don't, I don't even recall why they call it 5 here. Maybe they're just counting how many they have launched and this is the fifth one. Anyways, what's important about this is the first space flight to send animals into orbit and then return them safely back to Earth so they weren't harmed. Um, it, although it's kind of messed up to use them as the test. They're trying to test to see if a living being can survive the flight. Because um, without this, then we wouldn't know if we could have sent um, actual human astronauts into space. Um, but thanks to Sputnik 5 or Korabel Sputnik 2, um, we now can send people out, out into space for exploration. Uh, for maintaining the space station, uh, those are important because uh, it's for science. Science is important. Come on. Next, 1909, the first race is held at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It is the home of the Indy 500 for all you racing fans out there. I'm sure you've heard of that term before, even if you're not. Uh, it's actually originally built by built past tense. It's actually originally built by a businessman to test cars for the growing motor industry in the in Indiana back then. The original idea uh, he said was to like have the cars go around the track, um, kind of to show off, and then the audience uh, who are impressed can go to a separate showroom area specific to that car or company to take a closer look and maybe if you're a billionaire you could buy one right there and then um, it is much different today than back then though because back then it, the track was made with just crushed rock and tar so it, it wasn't durable it kept breaking and then the bumps in the road caused a, actually a couple of deaths um, so they, they fixed that nowadays it's better it's more durable and they have to because they're racing on it and you just want the exciting um, race, not anything negative and grim happening. Just the race. The notable figure born on this day is 1956, Bill Clinton. One of the, um, one of the more, more often, uh, what do you call that thing when people try to imitate someone impersonate he his voice is so unique that a lot of comedians impersonate him his full name is actually William which is where the bill comes from I still don't understand where, why bill comes from William do you guys know why why does bill come uh, is the nickname for William yeah cuz I mean cuz it's if it's William wouldn't it be will not bill yeah, it's weird. Anyways, his full name is William Jefferson, Jefferson. I'll do that again. I said that wrong. William Jefferson Blythe III. Uh, he was born in Arkansas. He was... Uh, that His last name wasn't actually Clinton. Clinton was actually his stepfather's last name that he adopted on as his own, I think, around 15 years old. Now, question for you guys. What number of president is he? Comment it below if you know, without looking it up. 
All right, so our um, place of the week is Cambodia. So our dish of the day is question mark, question mark, question mark. Because I won't tell you yet. Let's show you a video of my trip to a Cambodian restaurant because I know nothing about Cambodian dishes and I wanted to try one so I could talk about it with you guys. So let's roll the video. Okay guys, the next dish of the day is gonna be a dish from Cambodia. And I don't really know much about their food, so I went and looked up a restaurant that I could go to, and I am gonna order whatever looks good to me in their menu, and then that's gonna be the dish of the day. So, let's go! Okay, uh, I am here and it looks like they have some outdoor seating so I might uh, do that because I think a lot of the one of the most popular um, Cambodian food uh, Cambo Cambodian dishes are is a soup and I can't really eat that in the car so as you can see uh, let me just flip so as you can see uh, there it is they have an outdoor that means I can eat here so uh, let's go all right here's the menu let's take a look uh, so they got wings egg rolls spring rolls uh, I'm not interested in those you could get those anywhere um, oh baimon bowl sounds interesting I never heard of that Cambodian fried rice might be good too to try but uh, let's try to avoid rice for now um, they got desserts too, uh, crispy fried bananas, but I'll opt out of anything sweet for now. Let's take a look at the other side of the menu. Okay, the other side seems to be uh, noodles, uh, noodle soups. Let's take a look. Uh, you could choose your own noodles apparently. Uh, rice or egg noodles in their thickness. Nom Pen House Special, I'll take note of that. Uh, the, it's named after their... Uh, Capital. Shlui bowl right there at the top. Beef intestine, quail eggs, and pork rinds. That sounds good, but I'm I have to avoid pork rinds right now. Uh, let's see what else we have. Alright, this section is stir fry noodles, mekatang, student noodles, weird name, locha, fit bowl, and mekala. So they also have stir fried noodles. I'll keep that in mind. All right, this section we got rice gorgeous. Um, that's also interesting. That's something that you won't be able to find in a lot of places. And this one's bread, and these are just extras. Well, okay, I've seen enough. 
I think I know what I'll get. Well, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Uh, I'll definitely come back here if it's good to try the other stuff. But the first thing I will try is the Nom Pen Special, since it's named after their capital. And I'll be getting that with whatever it comes standard with since I don't know what it is yet, so they should make it the way it's supposed to be. Alright, well, here we are. Um, just like any Asian noodle soup, it'll come with bean sprouts if you want to add a little bit more crunch for texture and a squeeze of lime, uh, because this seems to be a very, very heavy soup. Uh, acid is going to cut that down. And uh, the soup come in two separate bowls. One is the broth, and you can still see the bone on in the bowl. And the other bowl is full of the noodles, as well as all the meats and toppings that it comes with. Alright, let's eat! These noodles are actually pretty good. Uh, they're seasoned, uh, instead of just relying on the broth to season them. They're seasoned separately. The broth itself is very heavy. The broth is beef, pork, and chicken combined, but you could really taste the beef flavor and, of course, the marrow of the bone in it. And they're playing some good songs too. They're playing some oldies right now. You can tell this soup has been simmering for a long time. See these meat fall off the bone. Its marrow is melting into the soup. Ooh. All right, I think I'm done. Whew. Well, um, that was good. Um, I ended up ordering the Nom Pen Special. I'm probably good. I probably said that already on a voiceover earlier while I'm eating. But yeah, that's what I got. Uh, I wasn't sure what to get. There are so many things that are interesting. Um, I ended up getting that since they named it after their capital city, Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. Yeah, I ended up getting that. And it was very similar to uh, Vietnamese pho. And you could order it with the broth separate in a bowl, as you saw. Actually, why am I even describing it right now? I'm just going to describe it while I'm showing you the eating footage. Um, what I should be telling you is... Yeah, I think I will come back here to try the other stuff again some other time. But, man, good thing I ate uh, a small breakfast today. Because that one, that, that really is a heavy noodle soup. Anyways... I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let's go back to the daily show. All right, so there you go. As the video said, the Cambodian dish is Cambodian noodle soup. Now, the biggest difference between the noodle soup that I ate and the Vietnamese pho is that the base is pork instead of beef. Actually, there's also chicken pho, but uh, the, the Cambodian noodle soup is pork. Um, in fact, the one that I ate even have ground pork in the bowl of noodles itself. And, you know, you could eat it like this, like in the picture. But, uh, you could also, I like it, I prefer it the way that I, that I ate it during, in the video. Where the, the broth is separate, so you could taste the broth on its own. And try it without any of the other flavors in the soup mingling with it and then after you tasted it on its own you could always just pour it back into the bowl you know you get an option so um it is um they're, they're, that place actually is proud of their broth because I, I just found out that they serve that broth with the student noodles as well and a lot of reviewers are uh, giving positive reviews about that um particular broth it's just really good. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And let's move on to Animal of the Day. 
our animal of the day is lyrebird. So why did I choose the lyrebird as the animal of the day? Well, it's because I want to show you this video. It's from YouTube channel Wen Hao Lee. Just watch and you'll see something interesting is gonna happen. It is a laser gun. Yeah, the bird is making laser gun sounds. Yeah, so isn't that interesting? Uh, they are a songbird, but instead of songs as you expected it, um, it seems like they could copy anything. They sound it, it sounds like someone walked around this uh, area with a laser gun and now they're copying it. Uh, I wonder how much George Lucas paid the lyrebirds to use them for Star Wars special effects. Now, see, again, as I said, they can do this because um, they have a very superb ability to mimic sounds. So, just so you know that I'm not faking um, that, or that that person is not faking that video. Here's another video of them copying other sounds that they have heard. from BBC Earth. What bird has the most elaborate, the most complex... He's, he's whispering because he doesn't want to I disturb the bird. And I can't this hear what he's saying, but that's not important. The superb lyrebird of South Australia. We just want to hear the lyrebird uh, copy some noises. Okay, right now he seems to be copying other birds. He clears a space in the forest to serve as his concert platform. <coughs> to persuade females to come close and admire his plumes, he sings the most complex song he can manage. And he does that by copying the songs of all the other birds he hears around him, such as the kookaburra. So it's kind of like um, he's trying to show off what he could do. It's a very convincing impersonation. Even the original is fooled. <laughs> so that's a kookaburra. And uh, he's trying to communicate because he thought that he saw an he heard he another kookaburra of at least 20 different species. because the lyrebird is so good at um, copying he also in his attempt to outsing his rivals incorporates other sounds that he hears in the forest other sounds in the forest that was a camera shutter what other sounds do you hear in a forest and again And now a camera with a motor drive. A camera? So someone, he heard someone uh, snapping pictures with a camera. 
And that's a car alarm. A car alarm? What's that doing in the forest? And now the sounds of foresters and their chainsaws. Sounds of nearby. chainsaws? Man, they, they sound like they have a sound recorder in their throat or something. <laughs> so they could even imitate the sound of a chainsaw. Yep. Alright, that's interesting. Let's move on to our plant of the day. And our plant of the day is... Boab. It's all, it's a cousin or the same one as the baobab that we had um, back in last week. I think last week. Um, also called Adansonia. But this is the kind that you would find in Western Australia. So if you remember what it looks like uh, from our previous episode, it didn't look like this. Actually, here, let me show you. The picture of the one from last week that's the one from last week so this one's like tall um, and then this one is kind of a uh, stubby and short but it has the same um, what do you call this the same characteristic of uh, the main trunk being a lot larger than the branches uh, it, the only difference is this one's tall and then this one is kind of stubby all right, let's uh, move on to our art of the day. Our art of the day is not something that is a traditional art. It is Spirited Away by Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, says Walt Disney Studios presents, uh, but it's made by Studio Ghibli, directed by Miyazaki. And uh, this is an art because um, a lot of people consider it to be. It has a very unique style, a very recognizable style. Let's show a picture. There you go. That kind of style. Um, this is seen from the film itself. This is a scene from a different film that is also made by Studio Ghibli. And as you can see, the style is very similar. That is very recognizable as the kind of style that they uh, incorporate in their work. Um, I believe it's considered art too. It's uh, not art in a traditional sense, but because of the unique style, also uh, masterful directing and storytelling by um, Hayao Miyazaki, and uh, the excellent quality of animation by the studio, Studio Ghibli. It is what I would consider uh, modern day art. Next is our word of the day. Our word of the day, of the day, is absence. It's A, B, S, E, N, C, E. Absence. Noun, it, it's, a, it's a thing. And it is the state of being away from a place or a person. Similar words that you might have heard of, although it sounds more complicated than the word itself. Truancy, uh, non-attendance, or unavailability. That one you might have heard before. Uh, it also means absence. And as always, um, with my word of the day, is always words. Well, eventually I'm going to run out of words that, that are this way. But I'm always looking for words that are commonly misspelled. Um, because sometimes people uh, put S instead of the C, absence, or sometimes they put a C where the S is. Common enough thing to happen. Um, oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, be careful because don't, don't confuse it with the word absent with a T. Because that one is an adjective. It describes someone. Uh, for example... Um, if Joe doesn't show up, he is absent. I'm describing Joe. But the fact that he's not here is a thing that's absence. However, Joe is here. He's not absent. 
fact of the day. Okay. Sorry about that. Fact of the day. A little bit of twist to keep it interesting, huh? Chewing gum while peeling onions will keep you from crying is not a fact. So we're gonna go reverse. This is the fact of the day. Chewing gum while peeling onions will not keep you from crying. That is a myth. So the idea, uh, what, the reason why the people believe the other one. Um, now I remember Joe did something uh, back then when we were talking about onions. He believed, uh, I don't know if he still does, that the fumes get that gets released when you chop onions go up your nose and causes the tears that way but um that's not true the reason why you get tears is because the fumes are going in your eyes not your nose that's why your eyes are starting to produce tears to kind of make a layer to layer of liquid to protect your eyes so um, they're saying that if you chew gum, the smell of the gum will block the smell of the fumes or the fumes itself because it has a very minty smell. But that won't work. If you want uh, to not cry while you're chopping onions, there's one way to for sure stop it, uh, but you will look ridiculous, is to wear one of those swimming goggles that like... Um, make your eyes like ba basically waterproof so the fumes are not gonna get in either or um use a very sharp knife so you don't damage the cell walls that much so only a little bit of fumes will come out but the surefire wear is definitely the swimming goggles if you ever seen a picture of someone in the internet chopping uh what do you call this onions and swimming goggles they don't want to cry anyways Oh, let's ask Joe. Joe, do you still believe that the few... Okay, he doesn't anymore. So, never mind that example. Anyways, that is our show for today. Please stick around after the credits because I'm going to show you a more hilarious version of the Discovery Bunch theme with everyone singing very badly. And also a picture or a video that Emily took of us... Uh, singing very very good uh, sure uh, yeah singing very uh, how, how do you describe that very very unique <laughs> it's the best because it's unique I've never heard anyone sing it that way before that's for sure <laughs> So yeah, stick around after the credits and we'll see you or I will see you next time next week on Wednesday. One more thing before we go. Thank you to my friend Jasmine for singing the Discovery Bunch song. Uh, she made that sound good. Uh, otherwise, it would have sounded horrible as you will see soon enough. Some of you guys should know her. Uh, she visited uh, the day program and volunteered her help for art one time. Anyways, uh, comment on the video to say thanks to her so that when she sees the video, she could see your appreciation. Discovery Bunch. Discovery Bunch. That's the way we all became Discovery Bunch. Cut! 
Jeez Louise, who hired these people?